Hello and welcome to the Capitol Report on NTD Television. I'm Steve Lance. Setting up a spending clash this fall, the White House today threatening to veto Republican-backed bills, saying they may hurt President Biden's agenda. NTD's Iris Tao brings us more from the White House. The White House announces that President Biden will veto a pair of Republican-backed spending bills that would defund LGBTQ and abortion programs if they ever reach his desk. In statements on Monday morning, the White House says it strongly opposes Republicans' appropriations bills for the Department of Veterans Affairs and Department of Agriculture, saying they would harm access to reproductive health care and threaten the health of LGBTQI plus Americans and prevent the administration from promoting diversity, equity and inclusion. The pushback from the White House comes after the House earlier this month and passed a defense bill that included what some House Republicans called anti-woke amendments and targeting social issues. We bill to not only insist that the laws be followed, but also to ultimately save countless lives of the unborn that otherwise would have lost their lives from this horrible policy. And the White House is also arguing that Republicans are demanding deeper spending cuts than what were agreed on in the debt ceiling deal struck in May. Lawmakers will have to discuss these appropriations bills this week, but it's unclear if Republicans' measures would get enough support in the Democrat-controlled Senate, let alone getting to President Biden's desk. Reporting from the White House, Iris Howe, NTD News. Seven Republicans now meet the polling criteria to join the first presidential debate this August. However, not all of them meet the donation criteria specified by the RNC. Entity's Ariane Pazdar has the details. The first Republican primary debate is set to take place on August 23 in Milwaukee. The Republican National Committee, or RNC, set forward three criteria for candidates who want to participate, including a polling on donation threshold and a pledge to agree supporting the eventual party nominee. For the polling requirement, candidates have to get at least 1% in three national polls or a combination of national polls and a poll from the early voting states. As of Sunday, seven candidates met the polling requirements. Those are former President Trump, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, tech entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy, former Vice President Mike Pence, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, South Carolina Senator Tim Scott and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. However, not all of them are meeting the donation threshold. The rule says candidates have to receive contributions from at least 40,000 individual donors, with at least 200 unique donors in 20 or more states. Mike Pence is the only candidate meeting the polling requirement, but not the donation requirement. He commented on the issue on Sunday. Having 40,000 individual donors, we're literally working around the clock. About, got about a month to go. I'm confident that we'll be there. We're not offering kickbacks. Uh, we're not offering gift cards. We're not even offering soccer tickets. We're just, uh, we're just asking people for their support. In an attempt to meet the strict donation criteria, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum offered $20 gift cards in return for campaign donations of as little as $1. Miami Mayor Francis Suarez offered a chance to see Argentine soccer legend Lionel Messi's first game for Miami. Meanwhile, Trump previously said he might boycott the debate and hold a competing event instead. During his 2016 campaign, Trump also boycotted the final GOP gathering before the Iowa caucuses and instead held his own campaign event. Ariane Pastar, NTD News. Is the government secretly collecting alien spacecraft and then reverse engineering them. A congressional hearing this week will include whistleblower testimony from a former intelligence officer who worked in the Pentagon's task force on unidentified anomalous phenomenon, or UAP, otherwise known as UFOs. Entity's Melina Wisecup has more details. So Melina, what's the goal of this Wednesday's hearing? The goal with this hearing is to shed light on if there's been transparency or if the government has been lying to both Congress and the American people for decades about unidentified anomalous phenomena. We've had a heck of a lot of pushback about this hearing. We've had members of Congress who fought us. We've had members of the intelligence community and also the Pentagon. Even NASA backed out on us. There are a lot of people who don't want this to come to light. One of the three witnesses is a former Pentagon intelligence officer who's now a whistleblower. His name is David Grush, and Grush says that the government right now has in its possession a number of what he describes as non-human vehicles, and that there are indications that there could be extraterrestrial life forms, which is contrary to the government's stance that we are the only life form.
Arrow has found no credible evidence thus far of extraterrestrial activity, off-world technology, or objects that defy the known laws of physics. Are there agreements between non-human intelligences and the American government? I think that's a question that I would like to know all the details of as well. Grush has handed over classified information to Congress and the Intelligence Community Inspector General, who says Grush is credible. This is a topic that both Democrats and Republicans care deeply about. Most of this data is classified, not available to the public. And there is a bipartisan effort to make this information public. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer introduced a bill that would declassify UFO records, and he reportedly plans to introduce this bill as an amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act, which is expected to come to the floor for a vote later this week. Reporting from Capitol Hill, Melina Weiskup, NTD News. A challenge to big tech. Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg facing contempt of Congress charges this week. This comes as GOP lawmakers ramping up pressure on what they call the platform's censorship. NTD's Sam Wong brings us the latest. The GOP-led House Judiciary Committee is looking into a vote to hold Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg in contempt this Thursday. If the resolution goes through, it could be taken to the full House, where a vote can lead to further prosecutions. Big tech censorship has long been a concern for Republicans since before they took majority in the House. Members of the House Judiciary Committee said that Meta has failed to comply with the panel's investigation on the matter. Chairman Jim Jordan subpoenaed four big tech executives back in February over what he called collusions with the federal government to censor speech online. Lawmakers demanded the company to hand over communications with the federal government, and Meta is no exception. Jordan previously set a deadline for Zuckerberg at 5.30 p.m. on July 31st, right before Congress has into a month-long recess. But according to his spokesman, Facebook has yet to turn over those required materials. He added that the committee will take all necessary steps to make sure it happens. Sam Wong, NTD News. Thank you for watching the Capitol Report. If you want to see our full broadcast, check us out at epochtv.com.